Howdy there folks, Midnight Assassin 2003 here, and uh, well guess what, we are doing another plane review today, so that's about three that I've done. I've done three uh, videos today, so it's pretty awesome. Um, and today we're doing a review on the um, British de Havilland Comet. Um, this aircraft is a very famous plane, it's actually one of uh, my favorite aircraft as well. Um, it's a very beautiful, sleek aircraft. Um, this plane was actually used as a competition aircraft. Um, it was a race plane. Um, it was built in 1934 by the company de Havilland. Um, its actual, um, well, its short form name is the DH-88 Comet. Um, and when I mean Comet, it is instead of the K for the German side, it is C. So comet so c o m e t um this is a very beautiful plane um you can pick this one up um i think it's also on simvation.com if i'm not mistaken or even flyaway simulation check it out i'll find it on the website and whichever one i do find it on i'll put that on there so yeah um it is a closed cockpit airplane as you can see um beautiful body I'm not 100% sure if this is a wooden aircraft or if it is made of metal. Probably not because metal would, you would see it. So this is, um, I think this is either steel or it's a wooden finish uh, for the fuselage of the plane. Um, it does have some rivets where you see the nails in there, but yeah. So that's the outside of the airplane. Let's get into the inside. So on the inside of the plane, it kind of looks like a biplane kind of cockpit. Um, so you'd have the guy in the front of the plane. He would be, uh, I think he'd just be like your navigator sort of thing. And then the guy who'd be sitting in here, he would actually be flying it. You could fly it both ways. Um, I'll do the front as well. Oh, well, I guess you can't. Okay, well, that's fine, I guess. Um, okay, so anyway. Um, Let's get the aircraft started up, but before we do so, let's do some background information on the plane, as usual. So, the DH-88 Comet um, is a competition aircraft built in 1934. Um, it has twin, uh, so two de Havilland Gispy 6R 6-cylinder inline air-cooled 234 horsepower engines on each side so both of these engines um, so this one producing two, uh, 230 and then the other one is producing 230 as well so each engine is producing 230 horsepower the aircraft had a wingspan of uh, 44 feet not bad for this um, and it was about 29 feet long it was about 10 feet tall um, and this plane's top speed, because it's a racing speed, because uh, it's a racing aircraft, its cruising speed is about 220 miles an hour, or 350 kilometers an hour. But its maximum speed is about 237 miles per hour, or 381 kilometers an hour, and could reach a service ceiling of 19,000 feet, and could go about 29. Uh, 100 miles or 4,700 kilometers and had a crew of two retractable landing gear um, And I think this aircraft might have flaps. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it does But yeah So that is the information about this plane. So let's go ahead and shut the canopy there Okay Get our battery on here. I'll turn my navvies on. And generator. And prop control and fuel mixture is at full rich. And then you can see right down here, these are the magneto switches for the plane. Um, so we got engine one starter switch and then engine two would be right here. Okay, so 
engine ones, my nettles are on, start her up, and it starts up just lovely. And engine number two coming on, and fires right up. All right, releasing parking brake, and we do have flaps, yep, okay, so that that's great. So that's the flap lever there. So I'll set it for takeoff. Okay, so very simple cockpit uh, setup here. Um, you know, you got your speedometer, altitude emitter, RPM uh, dials right here, boost and oil pressure. Um, this is compass, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, or one of those horizon things. Um, and these are, yeah, so that's our pressure gauges. That's, I think, oil temperature. This, I have no idea what that is. I think that's just like one of those uh, magnetic things that can tell you when you're turning the aircraft, and it shows a little diagram of it. Anyway, let's get the sucker airborne. So, in FSX, this airplane handles really, really well. Um, very smooth flying in this plane. I love it. Alright. Pull up before we strike the ground here. And we are airborne. Alright, landing gear is coming up. So it is stiff at first on takeoff, that's just because of the crazy amount of speed that this aircraft pushes. Um, as you can see here, we're already going pretty quick, so, you know. Um, so I'll just reduce the throttle just a little bit so I can at least get the plane to climb a little bit. But yeah, all the rest of this aircraft is very, very good. It, it responds really well as well. Um, it's got a really big light on the front. That's navigation, I believe. That also works as a pretty good landing light. So this aircraft is not a stunt plane, um, although you could probably pull off some pretty sweet barrel rolls in this thing. I wouldn't really recommend doing so. Mainly because of that long wingspan there that would actually mess up your your barrel roll there. And it's got the propellers on the engines on the bottom, so that's kind of a weird weight differential that we're uh, throwing around. Um, I'm not 100% sure if there are still any of these airplanes flying. There might be, um, but it's either that or they're just in museums and they don't fly anymore. Um, but yeah, this was a very famous airplane. Um, definitely, like as I did say, a competition. So in the 30s, um, Post-World War II, uh, no, post-World War I, sorry. Um, yeah, they just made a bunch of race planes. Um, if you look through the years, actually, you'll see a bunch of, um, like, if you look through racing planes of post-World War I, you'll see this show up and a bunch of other ones, too, um, for competitions. Um, and one of the American planes is called the GB, um, which you guys have probably heard of. It's a very tiny little plane with a big red nose. Um, that's another competition airplane. Um, that's American. So that's pretty cool. Um, and if I was to rate this particular aircraft, I'd probably rate it a solid 8 out of 10. Um, mainly because of its detail and the amount of time these guys put into this plane um, and just how it performs. Um, it's not going to perform like your everyday Plane, you know, it won't pull um, some fancy maneuvers like what I'm trying to do now. Um, it's not going to really do a backflip or anything like that. That's because it's not what it's designed to do. This airplane is designed for slow maneuvering, fast speed races. And that's what these planes were built for. They weren't built for stunts or anything like that. So don't think that this is going to be a Red Bull stunt plane because it ain't going to work like that. So, yeah. But, very famous plane nonetheless, and very fun too, so it's a real joy to fly. 
Um, I'd love to see one of these in real life. I really would. Anyway, back to the cockpit. Let's try and get this sucker on the ground safely. Of course, so. Landing gear, release. And drop flaps. Now, here's the thing that I found interesting about this plane. Its landing gear actually takes longer to go up than it does to go down. In this game, I don't know if that's the same thing as it would, uh, like as it would be in real life, but that's what I found out that whenever I put the landing gear up, it takes longer to go up than it does to go down, so that's interesting. If you guys do look up this airplane, you might find some original footage of these things in competitions. Um, so yeah, that's something else. Um, I'd love to fly one of these, to be honest, it'd be fun. Let's get some throttle up there, nose and point down a bit too much. I don't want to nose dive and hit the pavement, that'd suck. And I think what's like causing the nose to dip down so much is those big engines right there because that's causing pretty much like a lot of weight on this fuselage here so that's probably why the nose is dipping down a lot. So to land this thing, it's pretty difficult because it, you know the elevators are kind of small so it's not really going to produce a lot of lift when you pull them up. So you really got to position the plane just perfectly so you don't smash your engines off the pavement or your nose because the plane's nose is pretty long too. Okay, let's cut throttle right around here and just let the plane coast. Okay, that's that's not so bad. That was an okay touch. A bounce, but that's alright. Wheels stayed on the ground, I'm pretty sure. Also, like I did mention, I cannot ta- oh wait, no, I didn't mention that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I can't taxi in this plane because it has no rear tire. It only has that little thing back there, but that's fine. Um, because we're not really going to be going anywhere else anyway. And stop. Crack the cockpit open. Okay, now I can just shut the engines down. Right, perk and brake is on, and shut it down. Okay, I guess I left the landing light on actually, <laughs> that's funny. Well, if you guys did enjoy this uh, short little review, do be sure to leave a like and hit the uh, subscribe button so you don't... Um, Oh yeah, hit the post notification so you don't miss out on any new video coming out. Um, and uh, I will put the uh, description... Uh, no, not just a... You see, I can't speak today. I got a problem. I will put the link to the aircraft in the description below. There we go. Yeah, that, that works, right? Alright, cool. So, put the link to the aircraft below. Uh, so you guys can download it. Uh, as I said, very fun. Good responsive airplane. I wouldn't really say it's a beginner aircraft. That's Cessna's. We all know that. This is one of those little medium planes, you know, like if you're used to high speed flying, this is one of them. This plane can kind of give you a bit of a thrill um, if you kind of go a little bit down if you descend on a certain angle and you pull up just lightly not not too hard but just lightly enough you can get a really good speed and um, the uh, airplane will actually loosen up for you so you can perform some more quicker turns because when it's slower that big wing uh, those that big wingspan is gonna have a lot of air that's kind of pushing on it so when you go faster, your airplane will be able to perform some better wing maneuvers or turns, um, which is pretty fun. Um, and yeah, that's really all I got to say about the plane. But uh, yeah, if you like this, let me know. 
Um, and if you have any other aircraft suggestions, let me know as well. Um, so that's that. Um, if you guys did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe. I will see you on the next one. Cheers.